Good afternoon. Breaking boundaries. Let's begin. So let me tell you a little story. My dad, we talked about hurdles, right? My dad was born with a silver spoon. He had everything that he could wish for. When he used to go to school, there would be a 11 horse chariot that would take him to school. He was so lucky that he had everything that he could have ever dreamt of. Royal living, that was his style. Till he was nine years old. And then he had to choose, actually he had no choice. His parents had to choose. His parents then had to walk over to new boundaries that were being made then. Boundaries, we talk about breaking boundaries, but there are times when new boundaries are creating, are being created. And they had no choice. They made a choice to cross the boundary from then undivided India, then Pakistan into India. And in that journey, he lost everything. He lost all horses. He lost all chariots. He lost his school. He lost both his parents. Comes into India and starts his journey of struggles, which we knew nothing of. We are born, my family, my brother, my sister. We knew that our parents didn't have easy. We knew little stories. We knew that there were struggles. We knew that he had to walk about 12 kilometers each day to school. We knew that he had to study under circumstances which we could never imagine. We didn't have lots of money, but we knew that we had to be the best to survive because we knew that what our parents were doing for us, we wanted to make sure that we would give them the best. So when our schooling started, when my schooling started, I made sure that I had to be the best. I wanted to be the best. And in that best school, I was the best. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to stand out. I wanted to prove a point that this is what I want to do. And in those times, the best profession meant being a doctor. And second best was engineering. No, no, I didn't want to do the second best. I wanted the best for me. As a little child, I was given a task, the whole class was given a task of making a diagram for electron microscope. I made the best diagram that you could draw. I was very good at it. I made it beautifully. I was so proud of it. I took it to my teacher and I was hoping that I would get appreciated. And he sees that, does not even look up, takes red pen and writes, label it. In my excitement of drawing that, I forgot labeling of that. And I was disheartened. I was dejected. I felt that I had not done enough. But more than that, I hated that teacher. I hated him because he did not appreciate what was good in me. He appreciated what I did not. He, he, he made sure that whatever I did not do was larger than life, but whatever best that I did, he did not even say a word. And that day I decided I would not study this subject. So there went Dr. Sanjeev Kapoor out of the window. So now second best is engineer Sanjeev Kapoor. And I start to study and I say, this is what uh, I would be. By this time, I had realized that I love standing out. I love being uh, noticed. I love that uh, people should say, he's good. He's somebody who we should uh, follow. In the class, I would go, I would study the subject that teacher has to teach in advance. Teachers used to have this habit. Have you heard of this, the topic that they would 
make you study. Have you heard of this? And I would say yes, because I had studied it. I loved that. I loved that attention. And that attention motivated me to do more and more. So I said, okay, there here I would do engineering and that's what I do. By that time, people started to predict. They said, oh, okay, this is one, this one will do this, this one will do. When it came to me, it was, oh, Sanjeev Hill, the IIT kind. Now that bothered me that how can people decide that what I would want to do? Remember, I want to get noticed. I want to stand out. I want to make sure that I'm not part of the herd. I don't want a following. I don't like to follow. I like to lead. That's what I like to do. So you cannot tell me, whole bunch of class cannot tell me that he is the IIT kind, he'll get into IIT. Decision was made, no IIT. Why? Just because I didn't want to do what others thought that I could do. And suddenly, <coughs> and suddenly I have, I'm left with options which are not many. So if it is not IIT, then engineering from any other institute did not make sense. So I said, okay, it had to be something different. And I decided to do architecture. And by best architecture institute in those times in Delhi was uh, SPA, School of Planning and Architecture. I apply, that's the only thing that I have applied. And that's the only thing that I want to do. And being who I was, that was easy. They would take about 15 students every year. 15 is a good chance. That's what I believe always. That's what I have always uh, believed and I apply there was an entrance exam I apply and uh, I'm waitlisted I have not planned for anything else there is no plan B there's nothing that I want to do there's nothing else that I would want to do this is it we used to have Delhi College of Engineering in Delhi which was on merit where you could get in without entrance exam there was no entrance exam back then with my marks, I could get in. But if it was engineering, I would have done IIT. What do I do now? Dr. Sanjeev Kapoor taken away by the biology teacher and uh, architect Sanjeev Kapoor taken away by the entrance exam. I'm waitlisted there. A friend of mine had applied for me in hotel management institute or a profession which was meant for people who were good at nothing. So that was obviously not for me, but I apply, since he had applied, I accompanied him for an interview and I, I just uh, appeared, I got through that, but there's no way that I would have uh, done that. In the meantime, I get call that I've been selected in School of Planning and Architecture. This is what I want. This is, this is me. And uh, I should have done that but uh, somebody a colleague of my father who I, I used to accompany after dinner walk and I asked him I said you know I have got admission in uh, SPA and I've got admission in hotel management tell me what I should do and he says I have known you as a child do hotel management <laughs> now that's a blow to my intelligence right that why is he saying this? He said, no, 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 no. I know what I'm saying. He says, remember this, that uh, you, your need is creative. Both would give you uh, that. But in, in this uh, field, uh, I think in architecture, there would be many people that you will have to uh, compete with. But in this field, it will be something uh, which will give you a chance to explore more. It will be new. And uh, it's something... Uh, which will uh, be a smarter choice. It may, people may say that it's easy, but it'll be a smarter choice. Uh, and then he said one line and he says, it is better to excel in a mediocre field than to be a mediocre in an excellent field. I said, oh, I say, yeah, but I'm taking the easy route. He said, no, 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 life is not about that. It is uh, the choices that you make. And uh, I realized that, uh, okay, this is, this sounds good. And I took a call and joined uh, hotel management and after three years uh, there's still no sign of being a chef hotel management was not being a chef but I still took that call that okay 
let me stand out let me do something different when i joined hotel management all my batchmates everyone they thought i was mad i was stupid what was i doing what was i thinking brilliant mind and what what is he doing he's ruining his life he's doing something which he should not get into and hoteling at that time from studies point of view it was it was not considered good so it was uh, different and after that 3 years of that i decided to become a chef again in hotel management if you were not good enough you would become a chef but that was not the case i was still in the top and still i made a choice that uh, i would do and by that time i had done too many things in my life where i was uh, loving to stand out remember how uh, i don't know if you uh, watched uh, from sunil gavaskar to uh, sachin tendulkar to virat kohli they actually are standing outside the crease to play they have the courage they are brave to stand out the chances of becoming outstanding if you have the courage to stand out are much much higher i took that call and i'm glad that i have continued to take that call that whenever i believe that there is a chance to where everyone is going this way i go this way i like oh i am alone no problem and suddenly i see that people are following that's what leaders do leaders like to create their own path most of us we don't even know where we want to go which is the worst thing to do if you don't know where you are going all roads will take you there unless you know where you are going and there is a road okay there is a goal and you are going there it's easy but there are mad people like me they say i know the goal but there is no road i will make the road once you make the road people start following you and that's what i love that's what i have always uh, done that's what i have enjoyed uh, my life and every day i when i was introduced i was it said that i i say that the day i it's not about doing doing a show to me learning is the most important thing i am here because i want to learn i want to learn from people like you when i meet people like you it gives me energy to learn i know so many things but there's much more that i don't know so i am a selfish person who wants to learn more and more so that uh, i can learn and i say the day i cease to learn i should cease to exist that should be my last day because that's what i believe that learning is the biggest motivation from for uh, all of us that helps to lead that has helped me to break so many boundaries every time there is something that i see which people are scared of crossing i say it brings a smile on my face i say okay another one let's do it let's try it and it is so easy at 28 when i was uh, awarded as the best executive chef of the country highest award in this profession in this country at 28 you realize that oh you are happy at the same time <clears throat> i was very sad because at 28 i had reached my professional peak it was too early for me what do i do i started to learn more from my home to <clears throat> work i used to see one institute nmims narsi munji institute of management studies at 28 i enrolled there part time course masters in marketing management that was actually to please my father because he believed that i had not studied enough hotel management was no studies for my caliber i had not studied enough but what it did it helped me with so much more it helped me to break so many more boundaries that uh, the paradigm that our world of chefs was i could change that in a significant way i remember the day in a hotel when i was uh, first job <coughs> in varanasi i am uh, very excited young chef all of 21 and i want to change everything i want to make sure that i learn the most teach the most give my best everything i want to do and uh, i want to break all the rules i want to change everything and uh, 
I said, if I am cooking, people who are coming to eat, I should know what they want. We used to get lots of foreign uh, groups to our college, uh, to our hotel, but we didn't know. We just were, had a menu and we would cook that. I said, no, no, I should talk to them. Uh, someone from Holland needs uh, different food. Someone uh, from Germany needs different food. So I went to the lobby at the time of group arrival to speak to the tour leader. And uh, as I was walking in, the general manager of the hotel was uh, standing in the lobby and he sees me in my full uniform with the tall cap and, and I'm, I said, good afternoon, sir. And uh, he says, yes, chef, what are you doing in the lobby? I said, sir, I want to, no, you should be in the kitchen. Those were the days when chefs were not allowed in a hotel lobby. And this is real. And that's, that is the time I decided that I have to change everything for this profession, not only for me. It is not just about me. It is something we were never taught by our seniors. I said, I'll teach anything I would learn, I would teach. I would get respect for chefs in this country. And I am happy. It brought tears into my eyes the day, 13th April 2017. Biggest dome in this country, Rashtrapati Bhavan, and a name is announced in the lobby of that hall. Sanjeev Sur Surendra Kapoor, Culinary Arts Padma Shri Awardee. And that's when I feel, felt that a job is done and it's done well. Thank you.